People like games. What's up, people? It's Solo, and welcome back to another episode of Speed Run. It has been a minute since I recorded one of these, so bear with me as I'm a little bit rusty in my delivery. However, Today's episode is going to be a little bit special, one, because its focus won't be on a game or genre, but instead on one of the most important individuals in the history of gaming, and a person who also happens to be a personal hero of mine, Gunpei Yokoi. So, as always, be sure to follow, subscribe, or whatever. It's people like games, and now, let's get to it without it doing much further. Gunpei Yokoi's importance is really hard to overstate because he is the man whose design and creative philosophy helped to transform Nintendo from a small playing card company into the sort of gaming giant that it is today, and whose ideas the company still finds its success on and still moves forward with. Uh, to just give you a little bit of background, Gunpei started uh, at Nintendo in 1965 when he was hired as a maintenance engineer at one of its card making factories. Because if you're not familiar, Nintendo wasn't always a gaming company. It actually started, I guess technically it was always a gaming company, but it started as uh, makers of playing cards and a specific form of Hanafuda cards, which is a Japanese playing card style game. However, uh, legend has it that being the tinkerer that he was, one day he messed around and decided to make more or less an extendable arm with the extra pieces that had been laying around the factory. And during a visit from then company president Hirochi Yamauchi, Yamochi saw Gunpei playing with the arm and called him into his office. Gunpei thought he was going to get fired. And instead, Yamochi was like, yo, that's super cool. And you think we can make that into a toy? Because he had himself been trying to expand the company outside of playing cards into a bunch of different fields. That extendable arm that Yokoi made in his free time would go on to be converted into the Ultra Hand, which was actually a smash success and one of the many successful toys that Gunpei brought to the market including the love tester, the billion barrel puzzle, and the baseball throwing machine. Now, obviously he would be successful with toys throughout this time period, but in the 1970s, when arcade cabinets and gaming and electronic ended up becoming more popular around the world, it was around the same time that Nintendo wanted to enter into that market as well. It made Gunpei one of its first two game designers, and he would go on to actually help mon uh, he would actually go on to help mentor a young Shigeru Miyamoto and the other Nintendo creators. And he actually was responsible for helping in a whole bunch of really important series throughout his career, including Duck Hunt, Metroid, Kid Icarus, Fire Emblem, Dr. Mario, and a whole lot more. Uh, but it is his products that really revolutionize gaming. And so that's what I'm gonna give a quick focus on. The first one came in 1980. It was during a train ride that Gunpei saw a dude playing with a game on his pocket calculator. And he was like, you know what would be really cool? If you had a watch and a video game, but combine them. And thus the game and watch was born. And so he basically created mobile gaming um, in its initial form. And then he was like, yo, but the real thing is, if you'll see, there's a, a future game and watch editions that had to be closed. So it's sort of like the 3DS style design and he's like wait you can't put an arcade joystick in here we need something that's flat that would allow the console to close and so he decided to make flat directional pads and so the d-pad was also a creation of gunpei yokoi but now you might be like all right shit, that's already a, an amazing career so i can see why you like him solo but his magnum opus actually wasn't even made yet because the true concept that he would come up with that would very fundamentally help define that creative and design philosophy that I mentioned was the Game Boy. His design philosophy was called lateral thinking with weather technology. And basically that meant that he wanted to create affordable entertainment from older components by combining them in novel ways, novel and unique ways. It was this idea that led him to demand the original Game Boy be monochrome with no color screen or backlight. He bet basically that the ease of use, battery life, durability, and most importantly, fun games would help Nintendo compete with its far deeper pocketed competitors. And well, he wasn't wrong as the Game Boy would go on to sell 120 million units over its lifespan. And if arguably you could say that again for the Switch today and you would have the same exact argument. So therefore that philosophy of his specifically has underlined the company from the Wii to the Switch they don't try to push graphics on you. They just try to tell you, hey, it's really fun and it might be portable. They're doing what the PS Vita did years ago, but 
adding their games and a few more extra elements to it and voila. However, it is fair to mention that he might have had a few failures under his belt, what with the creation of Rob and the Virtual Boy, but shit happens when you're trying to do cool shit. And in some cases, he was just arguably too far ahead of the curve as an at-home virtual reality goggles would become a reality, looking at you, Oculus. But, you know, he was wrong at the time, and he also made the ways again, a few other things. So there was a lot of failures in the process. But more importantly, what went right was vastly more important than the few he got wrong, for those that might need a lesson. And though he may not be the most popular or known figure in the industry, his legacy indoors, using older technology and betting on fun gameplay, is a concept that has shown Nintendo's switch to just literally dominate the entire market, uh, even in the face of new generation competitors. Um, and I guess, you know, there's not too much more to add. As with many individuals whose stories will come to be known as gaming grows in importance, I just want to use my platform to help celebrate and share the story of one whom I believe to be the most curious and underappreciated of them, Gunpei Yokoi. Uh, that's all I got. I am definitely running over. I didn't even look at the time slot, but before I get out of here, I do want to dedicate this episode to my father. And with that, I'll be back sooner or later. Peace.